Literacy practices are almost always fully integrated with interwoven into, constituted as part of the very texture of wider practices that involve talk, interaction, values, and beliefs. That is according to James G. in Social Linguistic and Literacy's 1996. A fantastic day to everyone. Welcome to our class today. This is Hermaly Ribanyas Beloy, and we will discuss about teaching strategies for the development of emergent literacy skills and teaching resources. Specifically, to discuss the following strategies pictures and objects, literacy and words, we also have sounds, and read aloud experiences. Before I proceed to our proper discussion, let's familiarize first the objectives of this lesson. At the end of this lesson, we will be able to define emergent literacy, identify the teaching strategies for the development of emergent literacy, and to determine some of the teaching resources that foster reading. To help us easily understand the topic, let's internalize first the common terms. What comes in your mind when you hear the word literacy? Some may consider literacy as the ability to read and write, but for me personally, I consider literacy as the ability to comprehend. And now let's read some of the definition of literacy from the different intellectual sources. <laughs> literacy, it is a key ability expected outcome of schooling. It is the ability to interpret, critically evaluate, and communicate messages. This is according to the International Statistic Review. We also have another definition from the Handbook of Literacy and Technology Transformation in the Post-Typographic World, 1998. According to them, literacy provides essential links between meanings and doings. Another term to consider is emergent literacy, defined as the skills knowledge and attitude that are developmental precursor to reading and writing. Whitehurst and Lonigan, 1998, page 848, begins to grow during preschool and is productive of letter reading skills, Lonigan, Shoshenider, and Westberg, 2008. Another term is teaching strategies. It is a guide to effective instruction. It helps teachers to draw on ideas as they make decisions about which teaching techniques most appropriate for all students to learn, according to Universal Journal of Educational Research. Another term to consider is teaching resources, a resources that is focused on ways to support teaching and learning. Uh, the, this is according to Educational Evaluation and Policy Analysis, January 29, 1998. A teacher who is knowledgeable about literacy theories and connects this knowledge with practice can critically evaluate texts, flexibly adapt curricula, and intentionally design instructions to meet the needs of the students. And now I assume that you already had an enough idea about the topic, let's proceed to the teaching strategies. Let's start with pictures and objects. So for pictures and objects, uh, pictures, paintings, and other visual constitute the most effective, most plentiful, and less expensive teaching medium. Content of the picture must be consistent of the age and maturity of the children. So the role of a teacher, the teacher must prepare pupil for learning how to read. The teacher must initiate activities using real or concrete objects such as alphabet blocks, toys, pictures, books, and others. Also, teacher must impart acquisition by the child of the basic sight vocabulary using pictures, configuration, actions, and context, uh, context clues, I mean. So the advantages of this teaching strategy is that it helps to predict, check, and confirm the meaning of the words. Another is um, noticing and using picture details to support the meaning. One example a teacher can use using this teaching strategy is that the teacher will present an actual flower to confirm the learning of the learners about a certain flower. 
And now, let's proceed to another strategy, literacy and words. To help children develop phonemic awareness, the teacher must plan carefully activities for phonics letter, sound relations, and sight word vocabulary. Further, for rhyming words and for matching initial sounds. Natural development of literacy skills become complex during early literacy experiences. So that is why it needs adult supervision to improve skills to transfer learning. So the role of the teacher is to control early behaviors like word-by-word -word matching or directional movement. Also checks one's own reading using knowledge of letter or sound relationships, known words, and parts of the words. The teacher also let the student recognize and remember words, phrases, and sentences as symbols for ideas that correspond to early experiences. And the teacher will make sure that uh, the words or the teacher will introduce words and see to it that these words relate to real life situation for a meaningful learning. Another strategy is sound. Educators can introduce these concepts to young children through songs, uh, rhymes and games, shared book reading, collaborative emergent writing experiences, for example, drawing with annotation. So the teacher will let the students distinguish and manipulate the individual sounds of the language. Also, the teacher will help the students understand of how letters are linked to sound. And now we are down to our last teaching strategy for this lesson, uh, the reading aloud experiences. So reading aloud to young children has been advocated as a natural device for promoting oral language development and initiating monolingual children into literacy. So reading aloud can help reading by reinforcing graphemic to phonemic correspondences it can be an aid to the acquisition of prosodic feature of English and help to develop writing skills by using it as an oral proof reading. And reading aloud also can be used as a technique for autonomous teaching and it may help some anxious students to feel more able to speak. Personally, I prefer reading aloud. Uh, like, I'm into expressing <laughs> and pronouncing the word. So I'm into reading aloud as well. And now let's proceed to teaching resources. We have uh, printable worksheets, digital resources, or the real objects. For uh, printable worksheets, the teacher can create or download modules or answer sheets or worksheets for the students. And uh, for digital resources, for example, your lesson is to identify some common body parts. So you can let the students to sing or to you can play a video about the body parts song for kids for them to review their body parts. And for real objects, teachers can bring or present actual objects available in the classroom or in the location. Before we will end this lesson, let's have first a short recap. When we say emergent literacy, it is defined as the skills, knowledge, and attitude that are developmental precursors to reading and writing. And uh, when we say teaching strategy, or strategies, it helps teachers to draw on ideas as they make decisions about which teaching techniques most appropriate for all the students to learn. So we discussed the four commonly used teaching strategies. We have uh, pictures and objects, literacy and words, sounds, read aloud experiences. 
So uh, that's it. I always believe in the saying to teach is to touch lives forever. Let's continue our passion to be a catalyst of change for our student as the future hope of our nation. Thank you and please refer uh, the references below.